Hey YouTube, Sandy Frank here. Uh, this week's episode of Hobby Talk, I wanted to talk about something that um, I didn't think I'd do a video on, and that is junk wax and the possibilities of junk wax. Now, last year, about one year ago, I had um, we have our city here. We have like a citywide garage sale, and I had a handful of old junk wax packs. And I was like, ah, what the heck, I'll throw them out here, you know, put a few dollars on each one and see what happens. And wouldn't you know it, every single one of those packs sold, and they sold very quickly. So I was like, man, what, what is going on here? Because um, this is like, I've had card shop uh, owners tell me, junk wax will never come back. It's dead forever. But... I think people overlook the nostalgia of opening junk wax. Like I have some of these packs here. Um, this uh, in this last year since the garage sale, I've been preparing for my next garage sale, which is um, coming up here in the next week or two. And so I've been picking up some junk wax, um, baseball, and a few basketball too, and a few football. And just to see if this trend is going to continue. But this could be a play. I mean, it's like small time play, but I mean, it's a chance to make some money on some packs. So um, these were like dirt cheap. I mean, like all these packs and since I bought, you know, numerous, um, like a lot of them, um, I was able to get them even cheaper. So like 92 score, 93 Fleer. 93 tops uh, series one these are just some of them too uh, here's some 92 93 nba upper deck basketball 93 stadium club seems like a lot of 92 and 93 stuff 89 uh, bowman of course you can get king griffey jr rookies and that stuff 92 baseball that's upper deck so there's some donners 93 baseball 92 92 leaf set 92 um, Donruss, some 1990 score. This this set is the set that has the uh, famous Bo Jackson card in it. And 87 Donruss. I've got some some more 80 stuff. But <clears throat> this stuff like this, old old school junk wax, particularly. Like, as you get a little bit older, like the 80s and like maybe 1990 to the early 80s stuff, that stuff is so collectible. Um, not collectible. It's so um, so cheap to get. And I think the reason it's getting hot is because, you know, look at hobby boxes and baseball cards nowadays. They are so expensive. Just like ridiculously priced for for uh, packs of cards nowadays. And I think people from earlier generations, like when these cards are out, they just want to open some packs and relive that. And we've talked about this on how we talked before, where people want to relive, capture those, th those fun times of when they were younger. My brother even went through this. Um, we, during the summer times, when we were at home from school, um, we were putting together baseball card sets and one of them that we really put tons of them together was the 86 tops and my younger brothers they tell me all the time that was like the funnest summer <laughs> ever was building sets of baseball cards and I mean it made the summer go by um, fat well you want the summer to last forever but they just remember that as some of their most fond memories is putting together sets of 86 tops. So they love the 86 top set. And for whatever reason, that was a year that we just bought tons of 86 tops. But, I mean, it's proof positive. Like my brother, when her, now he's older and, and has a disposable income, he wanted to put together heritage sets. So um, it kind of recaptured that, that love of baseball card collecting. And, you know, who wants to go out and spend $10, $20 on a hobby pack of baseball cards when you can buy, like, a whole box of, of some of these old um, nostalgic 
baseball card junk wax um, packs um, and practically buy a whole box for a price of one pack of modern stuff. So this is going to be my play, and I'm going to report to you guys what I find. So at my garage sale, I'm going to put these these packs in there. Um, I will put, you know, I'm not going to sell them for expensive prices. I'm going to sell them for cheap prices, but still more than what I paid so that I'm making a profit. And I will prove to you guys that there is still a play to be had with junk wax, especially if you can get it really cheap because... People, they just want to buy a pack or two and relive some of that joy. Like, this one has bubble gum in it. I mean, how cool is it to get a pack of baseball cards that still has bubble gum in it? Now, hopefully, um, the person who buys this pack is not going to eat the gum and die. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, it's just a cool thing. And I'm really resisting opening this kind of stuff myself because I want to... Um, I bought it to sell at my garage sale and I will make take good notes and um, keep track of the packs that I'm selling so maybe if you guys want to make a play maybe your town is having a citywide garage sale or your neighborhood or whatever um, garage sales I think they were gone for a few years because of COVID I mean no one was doing garage sales during the COVID years so now People are, you know, back to socializing and doing things um, like going to garage sales and having garage sales. There's a lot of stuff that hasn't been picked over for a few years. So I think garage sales are a great way to move some old stuff that you want to. Like I've, I've had a huge success selling just bulk Pokemon and take a, like a Pokemon 10 fill it up with some bulk cards and I tell the people at the garage sale hey this is just bulk cards and then I give them an original base set Pokemon card with the uh, tin um, like a bonus and people were loving it and they wanted to came back and bought more so there's plays to be had small scale like at a garage sale and hey it's making money it's maybe smaller but a smaller way to make money but you're making money and it's fun and who knows maybe someone's gonna pull i mean there's hall of famers in these packs and this is another subject is how crazy was it and now you probably had a big part of it that one of the most collectible players in history ken griffey jr his rookie cards are right in the junk wax era and maybe his popularity help create even more junk wax because people were wanting his rookie cards look at michael jordan um most of his cards are from the junk wax era of when they were just printing cards to to the kingdom come of course like players like lebron james patrick mahomes they're in this modern era where their cards are very expensive uh, because they imprint billions of them but it's still fun to go chase those those players and you know, at some point, junk wax will start disappearing. It's inevitable. They didn't print unlimited supply. It seems like it, but they didn't. And eventually, these old packs will start to get harder and harder to find. And as years go by, I mean, look at this. This is the oldest pack up here. 87 Donruss. Very cool set. Um, I would say in this pack, let's see, how old is this? 40, 47 year old pack. This pack of baseball cards is almost 50 years old. I have to even think about that. Is that really true? Because it's 2024. 24. No, not. Okay, hang on. See, my math is terrible. 87. So that, that was 13 years to go to 2000. And then, okay, so it's 37 years old. Not 47. So, but still, these cards are almost 40 years old, still sealed in the wax pack. So the the time is starting to come where people are going to start desiring these things. Even though we thought, and card shop owners thought, that this stuff was never going to be worth anything. But it's that draw, that drive that we have 
as we get older, wanting to collect things that we had when we were young. And baseball cards were huge when I was a kid. Um, I would guess some of the earlier 80s, like 81, 80, you know, back on then, they're getting very expensive for packs. But, you know, you can still get the junk wax era, era which is late 80s, early 90s. That stuff is so cheap. I mean, and guys, work deals. Use negotiation skills. Um, go to, uh, there's shops out there that have junk wax and they would love to move it. You know, tell them, hey, if I buy three boxes, give me, you know, 20% off, 25% off. And I, I can almost guarantee you if they want to have any type of negotiation desire at all, they'll do it. Some shops don't want to negotiate on prices at all. And I don't usually go to those. I like to work deals. And if they don't like working deals, I just go to other shops that, that do like to do that. Because, um... I mean, it makes it fun. I Some people probably think that's a beating. I think it's fun to work deals. But that's how I got all these packs. Worked a deal with the uh, with the card shop and got them for a really nice deal. And I'm going to, in turn, turn those savings over to people that come to my garage sale. Or I'll still make money on them. But they'll get to enjoy opening some old vintage baseball card packs. So come to my garage sale and buy some old vintage packs and I will report back, you know, what, like I'll even report, you know, I paid this much for these and I made this much and this is how much I sold. Um, let's have a fun garage sale. All right. And um, put down in the comments, guys. Do you think this is just a dumb waste of time to uh, maybe invest, not like, like invest, but buy some old wax and sell it like garage sales i mean you can sell on ebay too but it's pretty cheap on ebay you're going to have to compete with a lot of people trying to move this stuff but like on a local level at a garage sale or like a card show people are going to buy it because it's just fun they're like oh i don't have to pay shipping on this stuff and it's right here boom i'll take it and that's your main um advantage is that people don't have to pay shipping People don't want to pay shipping on cheap stuff. And you don't want to sell it for free shipping because you're making nothing. So this is a different play, a more localized play. But hey, when you're in the game, hustling, making some quick tendies, let's see how it does. All right, stay tuned for more videos. Later. Oh, well, I can't, but Santa cannot lie. You are the brothers I can't deny